March 8th, 1924, dawned sunny and cold. By the end of the day, 172 coal miners were dead. 172 families were decimated, and hundreds of people's lives were changed forever. It's a somber Sunday in the mid-1920s. The coal industry in Utah was facing a slump. Coal prices had dropped, and the demand for coal was waning, as it often did in the spring months. The Utah Fuel Company, who owned all three mines at Castlegate, three miles north of Helper, as well as the mines at Winter Quarters, Clear Creek, and Sunnyside, had closed the Castlegate No. 1 mine on March 1, 1924, due to lack of demand. The company moved all married miners and experienced miners with seniority over to the Castle Gate Number 2. The younger unmarried men were laid off, which angered them but proved a life-saving measure. In the early morning of March 8, 1924, 171 men entered the Castle Gate Number 2 mine for the last time. At 8.30 a.m., toward the back of the mine, the fire boss was checking for methane gas. A large amount of coal had been shot down or dynamited the night before, and the fire boss was accompanied by three loaders who began to load the huge pile of coal into waiting cars. The fire boss climbed onto the coal pile to check for methane gas near the roof. As he reached up toward the ceiling, his light was extinguished, a sure sign of the presence of the deadly gas. The fire boss sat down on the pile of coal and tried to reignite his lamp. The flame struck the pocket of gas and caused a localized explosion. This explosion, though small, raised the dry coal dust into the air throughout the mine. Meanwhile, above ground, the fan operator noticed that a breaker controlling the fan was off. He flipped the switch and it immediately shut down again. He repeatedly tried to get the breaker to stay on with no luck. Finally, with one more flick of the breaker, the fan operator felt the second explosion rock the mine. The faulty breaker had caused a spark inside the mine, which in turn ignited the suspended coal dust. The resulting explosion rushed through all portions of the mine and shot out of the mine portal with the force of a cannon. Timber from the mine supports were hurled across the canyon like deadly missiles. A mine car was blown from the entrance and embedded into the opposite hillside. The entrance to the mine caved in like a crater. The man trip driver, just leaving the mine with his empty cars, was also thrown clear of the mine. Until the day he died, he blamed himself, believing that he drove the ill-fated miners to their death. The miners in Castle Gate No. 2 stood no chance. While the initial explosion was localized and most likely killed just the four men working in that area, the second explosion propelled the hot, burning gas and flame through the tunnels of the mine at lightning speed. Most of the men died where they were working. In 1924, very little was known about the explosive properties of coal dust and methane gas. At that time, miners' light was provided by the open flame of carbide lantern, and it was perfectly legal to smoke in the mine. The technique of rock dusting, spraying crushed rocks on the mine surfaces to reduce coal dust, was just starting to be used. One of the most iconic headstones in the cemetery belongs to a Welsh immigrant who was killed along with his son. It says, I little thought when they left home that they would ne'er return, that they in death so soon would sleep and leave me all alone.